I've had the privilege of meeting with six gentlemen who shared their rather story. They told me about their decades in captivity as prisoners of war, resulting from the conflict between Morocco and the Polisario group in the Western Sahara. This conflict ended in 1991 with a formal ceasefire, but 408 Moroccans remain in captivity, many of them for well over 20 years, and they're today the longest held prisoners of war anywhere in the world. These six men, these six brave men, spoke about their own experiences in prolonged captivity, of being kept isolated in desert camps, of enduring physical and emotional treatment that any one of us would call torture, of facing an inadequate diet and little shelter from the elements, of giving up careers in medicine, the law, and education, of learning that loved ones had passed away and never knowing newborn children, some of whom are now married with children of their own. Each of these six individuals with me was in prison for more than 20 years. The Third Geneva Convention requires the immediate and total release of all POWs as soon as a ceasefire is implemented. Now that a decade and a half has passed since the formal ceasefire, it's well beyond the time when all remaining prisoners must be released. That more than 400 individuals remain captive constitutes a gross violation of international law and a travesty of basic human rights. So today I join with these men and with Mr. Les Jackson, who is the director, executive director of the American XPOW's organization, to call for the release of these prisoners without further delay. I would note we're not the first to make this appeal. The State Department has repeatedly called for the release of all POWs held by the Policero. Amnesty International has said that the continued detention of these men over a decade after the declaration of ceasefire is a gro grave abuse of their right to physical and mental integrity, a flagrant violation of the international humanitarian law, and a serious abuse of human rights. The International Committee of the Red Cross has warned that it has concerns about the prisoners' health after prolonged detention and said bluntly that, quote, these people should have been released a long time ago at the end of hostilities. Just last month, for the fourth time, the United Nations Security Council adopted a resolution uh, urging the Polisario Front to release without further delay all remaining prisoners of war in compliance with international humanitarian law. UN Secretary General Kofi Annan called their continued detention as a, quote, serious humanitarian issue and called on the Polisario once again to release all prisoners without further delay in compliance with international humanitarian law. Uh, I would also point out that it's very important for us to remember that a ceasefire calls for the release of prisoners. The Korean War ended with a ceasefire. There has never been a formal peace declaration. If what happened to our prisoners in Korea would have happened to the individuals of 408 that are still held, we would still have Americans being held prisoner in North Korea or China. I know all too well that appeals to decency and justice can make a difference in the lives of prisoners. That's why I stand here today. I've sent a letter to the leadership of the Polisario Front calling for the immediate release of all prisoners of war, and I know that my colleagues in the Senate and others will join this call as well. I'd like to ask um, uh, Mr. Les Jackson, the Executive Director of the American PO XPOW's organization, and then one of our prisoners to uh, make a brief statement, and we'd be glad to respond to any questions or comments. Les? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Les Jackson. I'm the Executive Director of the American Ex-Prisoners of War, and I appreciate this great privilege to be standing here alongside Senator McCain and these six very courageous Moroccan men. Ours is a national organization devoted to serving the needs of American citizens who were captured by the enemy. Our membership consists of ex-prisoners of war, their families, and uh, internees. We have, um, today we have 300 chapters and state departments in our organization. And our motto is, we exist to help those who cannot help themselves. 
Because our organization consists of Americans and focused on consisting of American XPOWs, you may justifiably be wondering, why am I here today? The explanation is simple. The POW cause is not about Vietnam. It's not about World War II. It's a matter of conflict. It is not, it's not about the merits of conflict. It is, particular, it is particularly uh, aimed at the individual, the ex-prisoner of war, and help him in any way that we possibly can. There should only be one point of view with respect to prisoners of war, and that is that the, the world community should be of civilized nations. It is a view that is founded in the, in the basis of human rights, respect of human dignity, and humane treatment. It is enshrined in the, in, in the international law known as the Geneva Accords. A global compact rooted in the belief that every warring society, particularly warring societies, must respect common rules of engagement. Therein, there is a bond between ex-prisoners of war exists, whether we're Moroccans or Marylanders, senators or retired senior, senior citizens, veterans of a conflict in the Vietnamese jungle or in the Sahara Desert. I don't know much about your war. I really don't. But I do know that it ended with a formal ceasefire in 1991. 14 years ago. I don't know much about the, uh, your uh, captors, but assume that they understand uh, international law. In the Geneva Accords, the community of nations agreed that all prisoners of war be unconditionally released immediately after cessation of, of uh, hostilities. I've not seen your countrymen, countrymen's conditions of captivity, but I've heard you describe them. I've heard you describe the, the, the death under torture and summary executions for fellow prisoners of being forced to work literally under the whip of, on military establishments and other construction projects throughout their captivity, of being obligated to give their own blood for their country, for their enemy, enemy's military campaigns, 